Functionally, we speak of the right heart and the left heart. The right heart pumps blood into the pulmonary circulation. And the oxygenated blood from the two lungs returns to the left heart, which is subsequently pumped to the entire body. The right heart is made up of the right atrium and the right ventricle. The left heart comprises the left atrium and the left ventricle. The two atria, the right and left atria, are separated from each other by a partition known as the interatrial septum. Similarly, the right and left ventricles are separated from each other by a thick septum, which is the interventricular septum. Let's now take a look at the interior of the heart. Let's look at each and every one of the four chambers, starting with the right atrium. The right atrium receives venous blood from the entire body. The superior vena cava runs into the roof of the right atrium, bringing blood from the head and neck and the upper limbs and even the upper part of the trunk. And the inferior vena cava enters the floor of the right atrium, bringing blood from the entire body below the level of the diaphragm. In addition, the venous drainage of the heart, in the main, enters the right atrium through the coronary sinus. And all this deoxygenated venous blood in the right atrium is pumped into the right ventricle through the right atrioventricular orifice. So when you look at the interior of the atrium, you see that most of it is rather smooth-walled. And projecting from the right atrium is a little appendage, that little appendage extending from the right atrium is the right atrial appendage or the right auricle. And the valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle has three cusps and is therefore spoken of as the tricuspid valve. And the function of the tricuspid valve is to prevent blood from flowing back into the right atrium from the right ventricle. We now move through the right atrioventricular orifice past the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Now take a look at the interior of the right ventricle. See how different it is from the inner aspect of the right atrium. It's ridged. And every now and again, you come across a nipple of muscle. That is the papillary muscle. And you can see that these papillary muscles send out thin cords, which attach to the edges of the cusps of the tricuspid valve. And these cords are called cordy tendini. The cordy tendini perform a very important function. When the ventricle contracts, so do the papillary muscles. And when the papillary muscles contract, they exert a tension on the cordy tendini, which hold the cusps of the tricuspid valve together and prevent them from prolapsing back into the right atrium. Once in the right ventricle, the blood flows into the outflow tract of the right ventricle called the infundibulum. And this takes the blood into the pulmonary trunk. Between the pulmonary trunk and the infundibulum, which is the outflow tract of the right ventricle, is an opening. And this opening too is guarded by a valve. This valve is the pulmonary valve. And the pulmonary valve has three cusps to it. The function of the pulmonary valve is to prevent blood from being regurgitated back into the right ventricle from the pulmonary trunk. Now all this deoxygenated blood, which has entered the right heart, is pumped into the pulmonary trunk and thereafter into the pulmonary arteries. And through the two pulmonary arteries, all this blood reaches the pair of lungs where it is oxygenated. Each lung discharges its oxygenated blood through a pair of veins, a superior pulmonary vein and an inferior pulmonary vein. Thus you have four pulmonary veins, two from each lung. And these four pulmonary veins run into the back of the left atrium. And this is oxygenated rich blood. And this oxygenated blood is returned to the left heart which comprises two chambers, the left atrium and the left ventricle. 
Once in the left atrium, this oxygenated blood is pumped from the left atrium into the left ventricle. Let's now look at the left atrium. Rather like the right atrium, most of the inside of the left atrium is smooth. And it is a thin wall structure like the right atrium and very different from the ventricular wall. But as with the right atrium, so here, there is a little projection or an appendage which has a rough interior. This is the left atrial appendage. It peeps around the corner, around the left border of the heart and projects on the anterior aspect of the heart. The left atrium leads into the left ventricle through the left atrioventricular orifice. The left atrioventricular orifice has a valve. This is the left atrioventricular valve. It's also called the mitral valve because the two cusps that make up this valve together rather resemble a bishop's mitre. Once in the left ventricle, this oxygenated blood is pumped out of the left ventricle into the aorta. And between the left ventricle and the aorta is an opening guarded by a valve. This is the aortic valve. And like the pulmonary valve, the aortic valve has three cusps. When you look at the inner aspect of the left ventricle, like the inner surface of the right ventricle, this too has a number of ridges, the trabeculae carni. And some of these ridges have broken free to form papillary muscles, which have cordy tendony coming off, which attach to the edges of the cusps of the mitral valve. They perform the same function that the cordy tendony in the right ventricle do, which is to say, to prevent the cusps of the mitral valve from being prolapsed into the left atrium when the left ventricle contracts. So we have had a look at the four chambers. Thus you see there are two pumps working in parallel. The right pump comprising the right atrium and the right ventricle with the tricuspid valve between them. And the left pump comprising the left atrium and the left ventricle with the mitral valve between the two. The right heart pumps blood into the pulmonary circulation and the oxygenated blood from the two lungs returns to the left heart, which is subsequently pumped to the entire body, head, neck, limbs, and the rest of the trunk. Your anatomy